optimizing your website and running tests to find out what actually works is always a good idea and it's something we definitely encourage at Thrive Themes. However, you need a certain minimum amount of traffic to really make this kind of testing work. So what if you don't have those kinds of traffic levels? Hello, I'm Shane from Thrive Themes and this is from a question that I've actually received several times since we started talking more about optimization and testing is you know what if you're working on a website where you just don't have a lot of traffic yet and if you if you were to run a split test because you need a certain amount of traffic and a certain number of conversions before you can really get a significant result with a low traffic website it can mean that maybe you have to wait months for even a single round of testing to finish and that's just not very useful so how do you optimize a low traffic website if this is a situation you find yourself in here's a three-step plan Number one, and most importantly, only fix what's broken. All right, if you look at your website, you have this low traffic website, there is a lot of optimization work that you could do, but your approach should be to only fix what's broken, only like in broad strokes, make large improvements to things that are really, really bad. The reason this is my first step in the system is because the biggest risk you have with a low traffic website is that you spend a lot of time tinkering with it, you know, tweaking little things, making small improvements, or even overhauling the whole site, making a whole new design and so on. But it's at a stage where you don't even know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. So think about it like this. You want to look at your website and look at, and you want to get a good enough version of that. And the only thing you want to do is if something's clearly broken, if, if you can change something where you can be almost 100% certain that it's going to be a positive change without, without even testing it, then that's a change to make. Here are some typical things that fall into, into this category of, you know, it's broken and it needs to be fixed. One would be site speed, okay? A slow website will always underperform compared to a faster website, so you can do some basic speed optimization. Another one would be a severe lack of clarity, okay? So if you have a website where it's just not clear what's on offer here, what am I supposed to do next? That's something where you can say, okay, let's, you know, let's just add a bit of copy, let's add a bit of structure to this to make it a bit clearer. Another thing would be just things that are actually broken. So broken buttons, you know, nothing happens when you click on them, broken forms, things like that. Another common issue is readability of the text. So if you have like a tiny font that's very difficult to see, tiny line height, you know, everything's very cramped, makes it hard to read. That's another thing where you can improve that. And, and the point here is, the important point here is, only make changes where you can be, as I said, very, very certain that it's going to be an improvement even without testing. That excludes any kind of, you know, don't, don't be too much of a conversion expert here, right? Don't be like, oh, we, I know what we should do. We should change the message here and we change, change the headline here and change this button color from orange to green because I know that converts better. I read a case study where that converts better. It's like you don't actually know that before you test it. And even the greatest conversion expert in the world doesn't actually know that before testing. So only in, in, there are very few things where we can say, okay, this is broken, right? If someone clicks on the buy now button and nothing happens, well, if you fix that, that's going to improve conversions. There's, there's no way that's not going to improve conversions, right? Uh, and same with a very slow website. Same with like a, a huge slider, right? If you have a huge slider at the top of the website, uh, you replace that. It's almost certainly going to be an improvement for the website. But don't fall into tinkering. Don't fall into tweaking small things. Just in very broad strokes, only fix what's broken. Step number two, what you can do is you can do usability tests, all right? So even without traffic, you can get some people to go through your website, maybe with a specific goal. So maybe you can ask some people to do a purchase, right? Just give them a website and say, you know, go through this, try to purchase something and tell me what you experience. Now, there's also professional services you can use for this and I'll link to some below. And that's something you can do even with no traffic. And this is something you can use to confirm that your fixes have worked, okay? So let's say you have this broken website, you add, you know, you just fix the stuff, you make it a bit faster, you add some clarity, you make sure that everything is clear. And then you get some people to do a usability test to basically just confirm, do they understand what's on offer here and can they buy it? And you don't need more than like five to 10 people to do that before you can say, okay, this is good enough. Again, the goal is only to get it good enough, right? We don't want to create a perfect website at this point. 
And the third and final step is this. Your goal should be to create one single funnel that is good enough. Uh, a funnel that can convert visitors into leads and or customers. This is going to be good for almost any business, for almost any business model. There's gonna be some way in which you can say, okay, I'm gonna send people to this page and here they become leads or customers. If they become leads, then we have some process by which we try to turn them into customers. You create one super simple funnel that's just good enough to do that. And then all your effort should be on traffic generation, all right? If you're talking about optimizing a website that doesn't get enough traffic to really run split tests, all your effort should be traffic generation once you have a single funnel. So whether that's just buying traffic and starting to test that, right? Because you can just buy that, you can buy enough traffic to get test results or whether it is you know, reaching out, guest posting, social media campaigns, contests, whatever it is, right? Whatever traffic generation strategy you wanna follow, uh, as soon as you have the, the broken stuff on the site fixed and one single good, fu good funnel, you just put all your effort into getting more traffic until you get the ball rolling to the point where you can revisit optimization where you can say, okay, this is happening now, we're getting visitors, let's start some split testing. So that's my three-step process for optimizing a low traffic website. Number one, only fix what's broken. Number two, do some usability testing, but don't let it become a distraction. And number three, put all of your effort into traffic generation for one good enough funnel. All right, if you have any other questions about this, let me know by leaving a comment below. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you soon.